Hello everybody and welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. This is our G1000 series and this is Ray Altman. Hi Ray. How you doing? Ray is gonna role play our flight instructor. I'm your host, Mike Thompson, and I'm going to role play the flight student. Our topic today is the engine run up. Ray, checklist usage is critical, right? Absolutely. Why is that so important? Make sure that our plane is safe to fly and make sure we're preparing the aircraft for different phases and leaving the ground and then returning to the ground. Ah, I don't want to forget anything that's critical. Okay, excellent. Well, folks, we're about to hop into Epic Flight Academy's Full Motion FTD, where Ray and I are going to walk you through uh, the performance of the engine run up exactly as you'll perform these tasks in the actual airplane. Everybody ready? Let's go. All right, let's do it. So here we are in Epic's Full Motion FTD, and we're gonna go through the engine run-up checklist exactly the way you would do it in the airplane. Now, at this point, we have completed the before starting engine checklist, the starting engine checklist, and before taxi. So we've taxied out typically to a run-up area, and Ray, I'll read the item, and could you walk us through it? Absolutely. First item on my checklist is flight controls. So we check our flight controls to make sure that they're free and correct using what we call the box method. So what we do is we'll grab the yoke and we're gonna put our thumbs up and we're gonna to turn to the left first and our thumbs are pointing towards the aileron that should now be up. We will visually look and confirm it went up and then we'll make sure that the right aileron went down. Then we'll pull our yoke back and then we'll look out of the back of the plane and make sure that the elevator did go full up. Then we'll turn to the right aileron, thumbs pointing there, it should be up. And then we confirm the left one is down. And then we bring the elevator full forward and we look back out and make sure that elevator did go full forward. Then we'll wiggle the rudders while looking out of the back and making sure we get a full left and a full right deflection and then we can set our parking brake. Ah, so that's the next item, parking brake. And I was wondering why flight controls come prior to parking brake. Great question. So our rudders and our parking brake, they share a cable. And if we were to set the parking brake and then move the rudders, we can actually over tension that parking brake cable and eventually it could fail. Ah, we could snap that parking brake yeah. cable. Okay, the next item says, PFD, MFD, check no red X's. So PFD and MFD, we want to look and make sure we don't have any X's on our communications, our instruments, or anything on the MFD side, our engine indications, or once again, our communication frequencies or navigation frequencies. Okay, no red X's on either panel. The next item says standby instruments, check. So down just below the PFD and MFD, you will either have a single Garmin instrument or our three standby instruments. We wanna make sure that they are working properly and the way we do this, we cross check that the air speeds are zero, the attitude indicators are showing level condition, and then our altimeters are set appropriately to that desired altitude for the day or the desired barometric pressure. So right about there, we're good. Good, now uh, what you're saying is, I might look down and see one instrument, that's the GI-275. Hey, does Epic have a GI-275 video? You betcha. Yeah, we sure do, so take a look at that video. The next item is autopilot, pre-flight test, then off. All right, so a quick lesson on how to use this. Before we engage the autopilot, we wanna first program it how we want it to work. So we will first push our heading button, and we'll notice that the um, the uh, flight director has popped up. We will then turn our heading bug, in this case to the left about 90 degrees. We will push our vertical speed button and then we'll push the nose up and we're gonna notice we start to get a climbing foot per minute uh, VSI. I'm just going as high up as it will for now. Yeah, I see that right here and I see it on the flight director. Yeah, we're starting to see the flight director okay. turn and it raise. So now we've put in what we want to do, and it's essentially what we're doing is that box method 
with the autopilot. So once it's programmed, we now hit the AP hard key or autopilot, either here or there. All right, and the next item on our list is electric trim test. Yeah, so on the left side, we have the electric trim. What we will do is we will push both these buttons and we should see the trim wheel come alive. If we push only one at a time, we should see nothing happen. Okay, then we say fuel selector valve on both. So here's our fuel selector valve. It is on the both setting. Then that takes us to the engine check. The first item on the engine check is mixture rich. So we make sure our mixture is full rich. And throttle to 1800 RPM. So we'll take our hand, use our finger to make small adjustments on that throttle. And we're looking for 1800 RPM. Once we're set there, it says magnetos 150-50, check then both. 150-50, what's that? So that means the magnetos, when we turn one magneto off, we should see a reduction in RPM, no more than 150 RPM. When we test both of them, they should have no separation or difference over 50 RPM from each magneto being tested. All right, so let me give that a try. I'm gonna take the key from the both position and I'm gonna go two clicks to the right mag. One, two, right mag. So I went from 1800 down to 1740. So that's about 60 RPM. Now, I'm gonna go back to the both position. One, two, back to both. I should see about 1800. Now I'm gonna go one click to the left mag. And I see, oh, 1740. Now that is also 60 RPM and back to both. So if I understand this correctly, Neither drop was larger than 150 mm -hmm. because they both dropped 60. Yep. And the drops were within 50 RPM of each other. Very or good. In this case, the drops were exactly the same. Yep. Airplanes vary, but the largest gap we want between the two magnetos is 50 RPM. Beautiful. Now it says a VAC indicator, VAC or vacuum indicator and not in the 2022 model or newer. What is that about? Yeah, so like we mentioned earlier, the GI-275, when we have the single instrument, we don't have a vacuum pump in our aircraft anymore. But in our earlier than 2022 models, we still have a vacuum pump to run our attitude indicator. So we have the vacuum indication on the engine indication page, and we make sure it is in the green. Got it, that makes perfect sense. Then it says voltmeters, 27 to 29. So we look down in the electrical area and we look at our buses. The M or the main battery has 28 and the E or the essential battery has 28 as well. That means that regulator is working exactly correct because it should be four volts above the battery voltage. Very good. Beautiful. Ammeters. Now it doesn't give me an amount, it just says charging. Yeah, so just below our electrical bus, we'll see the battery amperage. And if we see a plus sign, that means we're charging. If you saw a minus sign, we would mean we we're discharging. That would be an issue. And then the next item says CHT. Let me guess. Is that cylinder head temperatures? It sure is. So to check our cylinder head temperatures, we use the soft key under the engine uh, tab. Then we will go to the lean and then, oh, that whole left-hand column just changed. Yeah, so now we're looking specifically at both exhaust gas and cylinder head temperatures. Okay, and it says below 400. Yep, so we're looking at cylinders one, two, three, and four. The little blue um, highlighted number will be the hottest cylinder. And in this case, they're saying the hottest one is 325 degrees Fahrenheit. We can hit this CYL or cylinder select and see each individual cylinder head temperature, and they all fall under 400, and they're all relatively even, meaning that we have a properly working engine. And in a horizontally opposed engine, I'm gonna guess the cylinders in the back are gonna run slightly warmer. Potentially, yes. Ah, potentially, okay. The next item says enunciators, none. So we're gonna look over in this lower right side of the PFD and make sure we don't have any enunciators. You might see a low volts, a high oil pressure, low fuel. We don't want to see any of those things right now. 
Okay, now we've been doing all this with the engine run up to about 1800 RPM. The next item says throttle, idle check, then 1000 RPM. Yep, we will smoothly take the power back to idle. So Smoothly back, yeah, we don't I wanna, noticed you said that. We don't wanna pull it back hard and we're gonna bring it back till it hits the stop and we're gonna then let it sit for three to five seconds. We make sure we're making a sufficient RPM. We don't see a large drop. We listen to the engine and we're making sure it's not struggling. And once we've confirmed, yes, everything's looking good, we'll then add the power in back to 1,000. So 800 to 1,000 or call it 1,000. And the next item is mixture lean. Yep, so to lean the mixture, we'll bring the throttle up to about 1,200. And then we will smoothly start twisting the mixture knob counterclockwise until we see a climb in our RPMs. And then eventually, there we go, a drop. And then we just turn it three times in. And that is a ground lean aircraft. Oh, and then we bring the throttle back to? 1,000. And when you're turning that mixture knob, um, I see there's two ways to adjust it. Yeah, if so I use my thumb, that's the gross adjustment. Mm -hmm. And if I turn it, that's called the vernier adjustment or what? the fine adjustment. Yeah. Ah, okay. Excellent. Now, the next item on the checklist says FMS GPS flight plan. So everybody, we've just done a video on entering the flight plan. Please see that video. Ray, our next checklist item says CDI soft key, select my nav source. So if we were using a specific nav source, for example, a GPS or a uh, ground-based navigation like a VOR, we would make sure we go over on the PFD, the CDI tab. And then what I like to do is first cycle through, make sure we're not getting any red X's on any of them. And then I would set it to the specific CDI that we would use. For example, the magenta line would be GPS, whereas we have VOR1 or VOR2, depending on which VOR we would want to use. Oh, so the ground based is in green. Yep. Like the ground, the yep. earth and the trees. Exactly. And the magenta is really space based yeah. or GPS. Yep. Okay, next item says transponder set. So then we would make sure our transponder, so you'll see, you'll see, XPDR, that stands for transponder. We'll see it says 1200. In that case, it's a VFR squawk. But if we had a specific transponder code we were told to put in by uh, approach, or sorry, departure or our ground, we'd hit the XPDR soft key. We would hit the code and we can type in whatever our four digit squawk would be. And if certain aircraft, we might need to then turn the transponder into the altitude mode. Uh, so some of the aircraft, some of the G1000s do that automatically. Yep. When the airplane lifts off to um, a certain altitude. Very okay. good. Now the next item is the departure briefing. And again, uh, folks, I want you to know that we cover the departure briefing in detail in the Epic Standardization Manual. So please review that departure briefing in detail there and go over it with your flight instructor. The next item then, Ray, says wind runways in use, cross-check inputs, and parking brake released. Very good. So before any takeoff, we need to be wind conscious. We need to know where the wind's coming, not only when we taxi, but especially when we take off. So we're gonna discuss what crosswind inputs we might apply using our ailerons for the taxi, but more importantly, when we get ready for our takeoff. Okay, then I can reach down and I can release this parking brake. And if we're at a towered controlled airport, we would talk to ground control and that concludes the engine run up checklist. The next checklist would be the before takeoff checklist. Well, thanks, Ray. That was an excellent walkthrough of my engine run-up. Glad to help. Well, folks, we certainly hope you found this walkthrough helpful. Remember, as you walk through this, your CFI will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Please hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.